Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And this is the series where I'm transferring from the ISS over to the Station 5. But instead of doing a direct plane change, we're taking into consideration some different options. In the last video, we raised our orbit way out to 100,000 kilometers. And we timed it so that when we got to our apoapsis, we would be really close to the ascending node. We, our timing was just a little bit off, but we brought, we brought our plane change down from 66.31 all the way down to like 0.32 or something like that. So we, we got, you know, by far, what, 99%? I don't know exactly off the top of my head, but we got most of it. The little bit of difference that we have left in plane change, we wouldn't even have to worry about. But most likely we'll pass a node at some point, so we'll go ahead and dial in that last little bit. I want to thank Dimitri again for giving me this, uh, this scenario. It's awesome. And let's go ahead and jump into it and finish things up. Actually, we may have a couple more parts, but uh, we will we will continue on. So we are at apoapsis right now. So the next thing that we need to do is uh, come down to um, our our low point and circularize our orbit and then set up our rendezvous. Now we could actually, if we wanted, we could actually use transex in do our and time our uh, time our maneuver so that when we come down to earth we uh, we actually catch the the station five at that time so that basically our you know our, our breaking burn at earth will also be our rendezvous maneuver I, I didn't really talk about that in our plan setup but we we can't well let's look at that because essentially that's the same thing as a you know, the step where I said lower our APA from 100,000 uh, kilometers to 2,000 kilometers using main engine burn, it's effectively the same thing. And it's not too difficult to set up, usually. Before I do that, though, I do, mm, I kind of want to, my orbit should be a bit closer to, um, to that 2,000 kilometers. I'm just not sure how far off that's going to be, but let me bump my translation thrusters a little bit. Not sure what orientation I'm in here. Let me, or I'm, I'm in anti-normal right now, so I would have to go. Oh boy, probably just inward outwards, so that would still work. So let me just see if I. Um, I'm not gonna figure it out. <laughs> let me go prograde. Okay, so because we're still really far out, so making adjustments to our PEA will be really easy. So this now would be a. Uh, retrograde burn yeah so I'm just gonna bring down my PEA so that it's closer to that 2000 again it might I think we're far enough out that this might be a bit inaccurate so we'll just kind of leave it where it is now but let's bring up transex and let's take a look at what it would take to catch the station 5 on the way back so I'm gonna go adjustment ships target station 5 and we're going to change our view here because this view is horrible. And focus, that's good. And let's go view over to maneuver, set up a maneuver. And now the big thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a big braking burn. So let's just put in a lot of prograde to bring that down. Um, yeah, something like, I don't, I don't know exact. Well, actually, we do know roughly how much it's going to be. It's going to be around... We do know it's going to be around negative 2400, so let me start with that. Now the timing is wrong, so we have to fix that, because we're not doing the maneuver now. We're doing the maneuver uh, like in 16 hours or something like that. So let me move the time forward. Let's see here. Now we're getting pretty close on the time. Let me view over to setup and let's scale to view. Yeah, let's look at this. I wish there was a slightly less zoomed in version of this, but this is still better than the other one. So now we're, this, this green line indicates um, you know where we're going to be when we come back when we're basically going to be touching the orbit of station 5 which is what we want so now I just need to get the timing worked out 
the timing in the Delta V worked out so that by the time we get down there, we're going to be at the same point in space as the Station 5. And I want to probably, I mean, that's looking close, but now I'm thinking I'm going to need either some inward or some outward to slow down my time because when I arrive here, it looks like the uh, space station is on the other side. So let's see, update every time we pass. Let's see if we can, I'm thinking it's going to be outward to get the timing better. So let me start with, let me start with a little bit of negative outward and then see if changing my date now See if taking time out. Gets me more in the vicinity of, but you know, this orbit's terrible, but we'll fix it. I'm not completely sure I'm going about this the right way. If if I have to mess with this too too long, I'll abandon this and stick with kind of that original idea. Let me try let me go back to outward. And do I need more? So that's kind of helping correct the orbit, but I want to go... Let me go... No, that's... Let me think about this. So, I think I actually want positive outward. Because that will, I think, slow things down more than speed things up. That's a lot of outward though. Let's uh, let's bring that down. Let me let me have like let, let's say at most like 300 outward one way or the other, and then I'm going to and then I still have a plane a little bit of a plane change I'm going to have to do. And now let's see. Do I need? So what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get accomplished here is I want my hypothetical to just be touching that blue but I want the space the station 5 to be at that point so I'm trying to get the timing worked out so to make that happen so and I'm definitely struggling um, I mean that's getting us there but again this, this orbit's not great so we're gonna have a higher encounter velocity Let's see, do I take this out? So if I take out some of that outward. Yeah, just bear with me, please. I'm going to need some plane change. I'm not sure how much or in which direction. I guess we'll start with that. And then prograde. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I might abandon this idea for the sake of time because I'm going to end up with this really high encounter velocity. Um, it's a cool thing to do, but uh, you know what? Let's not do this. Let's throw away this plan. I, I would be interested in figuring this out, but I'll spend the next half hour or more messing about, and I'm not going to do that. So let's turn that off, and let's just go with kind of our original idea of going back down to Earth using the main engine to do a breaking burn to get us in a, uh, you know, about a 2,000 by 2,000 kilometer orbit. Although I should plan on being either a bit higher or a bit lower so that I can uh, have my timing, you know, so that the space station will catch up to me or I will catch up to it. I could probably use IMFD to figure some of this out, but I don't know. Rotation. I don't quite know what to do. So, are we going to be higher or lower? Translation. Let's plan on being probably whichever way I pick. I'll wish I had gone the other way. Let's plan on arriving at Earth at 2100. So, now I kind of regret taking out that velocity that I had in there. But uh, that's okay. We have a bit of a surplus here. So, I'm just going to set my PEA to 2100. And hopefully it doesn't change drastically. So that'll give me a 100 kilometer difference between myself and Station 5 so that I can work out the timing. 
All right, now let's warp time forward until we are ready to do our circularization burn. And we want to be really careful with our time warp going back to Earth because the closer you get, the faster you go. So it's really easy to overshoot Earth. I've done it so many times. So we're just going to stay at 1,000 for now. Let's take a look at our altitude. So that held pretty well, just a 10 kilometer difference. 100 kilometer difference. All right, let's get in a bit closer. So time to periapsis is about 3,000, 2,000. So let's start thinking about how we're going to do this circularization burn. We're going to use um, IMFD because I'm trying to get more and more familiar with that. So come out of the burn vector, switch pages. I need to go over to delta velocity and get out of that program. And I want, do I want orbit insert? Or let me think, or do I just want orbital? I think I just want, I think I might, I think I might be able to use either one. Let me look at, uh, let me look at orbit insert really quick. And I'm not super familiar with this. I do remember using it, but I think all we would have to do is, let me see. Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm going to stick with orbital circularization. I'm a little bit more comfortable with it. So let's see. Let's think. What do we need to do? Let's bring up orbit on this side. We're still 2,700 seconds away. When do we begin the burn? That's one thing this program doesn't really tell me. Because obviously we don't begin it exactly at periapsis. I guess I can bring up burn time calculator and help me figure that out. Let's uh, let's get in a bit closer. So we're going to have about a 170 second burn time, but that's going up. Let's see here. Oh wait, I, I know when to begin the burn. It will circularize my orbit wherever I'm at. So I don't want to really begin the burn until I'm at the point of the orbit that I want to be. So when I'm really close to periapsis, I'll begin the burn. Because currently my altitude is 6,000. You know, and if I began now, it would actually circularize right here where I'm at. So let me get in closer to the target altitude. And we're getting pretty close to that point, so we want to start thinking ahead and help out the, uh, you know, help out the autopilot or click AB, let it get aligned and then turn off AB before it actually begins the burn. And let's see, we're at 2,800, 27. Let me see, what did I estimate? I estimated the breaking burn would cost 2,500. Currently it's 3,000 and coming down. So that estimate might, let's see how accurate that was. All right, let's get down closer. So 2,800, so that number is becoming more and more accurate by the, uh, according to the calculation. A bit closer. Yeah, I think that number is going to be pretty close. It was 2,495.56. So let me see, burn time is 102 seconds. So, oh, I know what we can do. When we're 51 seconds from PET, that's when we begin the burn. That'll be half and a half. Might go a little bit sooner than that. Okay. Let's help out the, oh, let's get aligned. So half of the time would be about 50 seconds. At PET, so I think I think we'll go 53 seconds, and there we go. And then we'll check burn time calculator, but we saw that that was around the number we calculated. But we'll check it afterwards just to see where we're at. Although one thing none of my calculations took into account was um, DV gain due to box consumption, since we spent 37 hours or something like that in orbit, we will have consumed a day and a half of locks 
in that will have actually raised our DV by a little bit, but I don't think that's an, I don't think we need to worry about that. The DV gain due to LOX consumption for this mission is probably negligible, but when you go to Mars or especially Jupiter or something like that, um, that's definitely something worth taking into consideration. Let me go ahead and warp time forward, get through this burn a bit quicker, and I believe it'll go down to 1x for us, yes. Okay, so there we are at uh, 2112. Perfectly circular orbit, and of course we're way away, but... Uh, and of course we're closer to it than it is to us, so we should have gone 100 below instead of 100 above. I knew I'd get it backwards, but I don't think I really had any way to know. All right, so let's take a look. We have 2948 remaining. So, and we said that burn would cost 2495.56. So let's take C29 minus C30 minus C31. And that's that's not how much it cost. That's how much I have. Um, let me think about this. Surely, I mean, obviously, it didn't cost that much. So, so I need that. No, I need I need minus not, and then I have to subtract off the amount of fuel I have left. Twenty nine forty eight. So, so that burn cost us twenty four eighty five. We estimated twenty four ninety five. But we also estimated uh, 2,000 kilometers, but we actually were at 2,100. So that's, that explains some of that difference. And we could probably actually go back to our calculator really quick. And what if we had done... So if we were at 100,000 and we targeted 2,112 instead, it would have cost... 24, 27, 63, 24, 27, 63. So that's, you know, you see that's a bit closer. All right, let's go ahead and switch camera views here. Let me actually do a pause. Um, I'll actually do a quick save just in case. And now pause. Uh, well, let's quickly look again at orbit. So just to have a, a view of how things are coming along. So let's go ahead and pause now. Switch camera views. And when we come back in the next part, we'll set up our rendezvous. And then uh, we'll, we'll see about docking, but that, well, that'll probably be a whole other video after the next one. We'll probably have to spend a video setting up rendezvous because we're quite a ways out. So with all that said, I hope you're enjoying the series, and I'll see you in the next part.